Come on, let's praise the Lord, everybody. That's a couple of people. Come on, let's praise the Lord, everybody. If you're glad to be alive and if you're glad that the Lord has saved you, I want you to stand to your feet just a moment and let's give God a corporate praise all over the building. From the rising of the sun to the going down to the same, his name is worthy. It's worthy to be praised. How many of you are just glad that the Lord didn't allow the devil to kill you when he had the chance? I can't hear nobody today. Let me say that one more time. How many of you are glad? Well, let me do this. How many of you can remember when you got real close to death? Anybody got any of those stories? I often, I oftentimes remind myself of the times when I got real close to death and um, it pushes me into a worship, into a praise. And uh, David says something so powerful. David said, Lord, don't kill me because the dead cannot praise you. Did you hear what I just said? David had messed up bad, and the raft of God was about to come on David, and David understood that the mercy of God was at hand, and he said, wait a minute, God, before you kill me, I want you to know something, that the dead cannot praise you. And guess what? God stayed his hand because he wanted another praise from David. I guess all I'm saying is the only reason you're alive is because you keep on praising God. So, so, so for those of you that want to add some more years to your life, okay, that didn't work. For those of you that want to expand your life, I need you to add, for the next 15 seconds, just add some more years to your life. Hallelujah. Bump somebody and tell them, I came to bless his name. Hallelujah, that's the only reason I'm here. I came to bless his name. Hallelujah. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. As you're being seated, touch somebody beside you and tell them, I thank God that you're still alive. Well, God bless you. I echo, I echo um, the word that just came from uh, our brother, and I thank God for what he's doing in our youth department. Did that just bless you with our young people? I am so, so proud of you young people. I thank God for you, but we understand that that cannot happen. That cannot happen without youth leaders that are sacrificing their times to make that happen. So would you praise the Lord for them? Just, just from, from the musicians to those that are serving in media to those that are oftentimes in this building working with our young people, I'm very, very grateful very grateful for you. You are raising up your children in the fear and admonition of the Lord. And for that, I'm very, very, very grateful. We're about to give unto the kingdom of God. But I, before, you, um, uh, before you give, I want you to look at Acts, the 10th chapter. And I want to show you something really quickly before we get into our giving piece. Acts, the 10th chapter. We're going to start at in verse 1. I just want to share something with you on how God works. Uh, as you're turning there... Um, the Keith family is with us today. Amen. Would you wave at us? Praise the Lord. Just wave at us. Um, one of my spiritual sons, um, uh, Pastor Tim Keith, uh, went to be with the Lord on last week, um, the same week uh, that my spiritual father went to be with the Lord on Sunday. Went to be with the Lord on last week, and um, so we're going to be praying for Tim, Tim's family, and uh, for his ministry, and for the, all those that he's uh, poured into, we're going to be praying for him, but I, I, for them. But I thank the Lord for the opportunity to be able to serve in the kingdom uh, with Pastor, with Pastor Tim Keith. The Lord's hand is yet still with you all. Amen. So as a family, we're going to be praying for them, right? All right. Dr. T. Lowry's homegoing service is this Thursday in Cleveland, Tennessee. Uh, I will be there. For those of you that would like to go there, you can go onto the Facebook page and you can see all of the arrangements i think it starts at 11 o'clock i think that's what it is it is at 11 o'clock and so um uh i'm gonna be um just celebrating the life of my dad on thursday so i would i would ask you to do me a favor unless it's an emergency please uh just let me have that day don't call okay unless it's an emergency call my staff they they are very 
uh, very um, professional and, and they operate in an excellence and anointing. So call them. Just let me have that day uh, to celebrate the life of, of dad. Amen. All right. Acts the 10th chapter. Uh, let me let me see if I put it in a more simple. Yeah, that's that message is fine. All right. That was a that was a name that was a man named Cornelius who lived in Caesarea. He was captain of the Italian guard stationed there. He was a thoroughly good man. And I want you to see what the Bible calls a good man. He had led everyone in his house to live worship worshipfully before the Lord. So a good man, number one, or good human being, number one, calls people into worship. They, they challenge people to come to worship. So for those of you that invited someone to come to service with us today, you're a good man. He was always helping people in need, all right? Now that, if you see that in the King James or the NIV, it says he was always giving alms. He was always giving gifts to the poor. Um, a good person is not just a person who brings people to worship, but a good person is a, also a person that is always giving to those that are in, in need. And had a habit of prayer. A good person is a person who has a prayer life. Now look how God responds to good people. One day about 3 o'clock uh, in the afternoon, he had a what? When you have decided that you're going to pull people into worship, that you're going to help hurting people, and that you also are going to have a significant prayer life, God will give you visions. And an angel of God. As real as his next door neighbor came in and said, Cornelius, guess what? When you lead people into worship, when you give to the poor, and when you have a significant prayer life, God will give you a vision, but he also will assign angels to your life. Give me the next verse. Cornelius st stared hard, wonderful if wondered if he was seeing things. Then he said, what do you want, sir? The angel said, your prayers and your neighborly acts, that's talking about your giving, have brought you to God's attention. Brothers and sisters, family, as we begin to worship, as we begin to pray, and as we give to God's people, it brings you into God's attention. The best way to give, get God's attention is not just to shout or not to cry. Or not to complain. But the best way to get God's attention is to be a giver in the kingdom of God. And so my challenge to you as you give today, that you give with intention to get God's attention. That you will give with intention to get God's attention. You are intentionally giving so that you might get the attention of God. How many of you need God's attention? Today as you give, you're going to get God's attention. And God is going to bless you for blessing others. I'll tell you what happens with the money that you give at this church. It is very simple. There's three things that happen with the money that you give at this church. Whatever you put in, whether it be a $1,000 check, a $10,000 check, or two pennies, there's three things that are going to happen with that money. Number one, we're going to pay the staff. We're going to make sure that the people that support this ministry and make it take place, we're going to make sure that they're eating well. We're going to make sure that they can handle their bills if they're good stewards of their finances. The second thing that we're going to do is we're going to save some for rainy days. And when God tells us we need to do something, we need to sacrifice, we need to put a well up in a country or we need to help the hurting and the poor, then, then, then we're going to save that for that time. And then the third thing is very simple. We're going to get the rest away. We're going to make sure that your light bills are paid if you are a tither. We're going to make sure that if you hit a snag in life, we're going to make sure that your church family is there to help you. And it's not just to help those that are in this city, that are in this church, but it's also there to help those that are in this city. And what God is going to do for you in turn is you're going to get his attention, and he's going to bless you for blessing other people. How many of you know that you can't be God-given no matter how hard to try. So for those of you uh, that are ready to give, our, a tithe is a tenth. It is a tenth of everything that the Lord gives to you. We believe that. We believe that God gives to us and then he says, I just want 10% of back, that back which I give, I've give. i given to you. 
The second thing God wants you to do is he wants you to give a offering. That offering sows a seed into the kingdom of God, and it produces a harvest in your own personal life. If you need more money, you've got to sow more seeds. And then the third thing that God challenges us to do is that when he, we hit increase or when we want to increase, we sow a first fruit offering. And so that's what we're about to do. If you don't have anything to give, you're saying, Pastor, I want to give. I just don't have anything to give at all. That's all right. We want to make sure that every person in this building has the opportunity to give. So if you have nothing to give, this might not be the day that you have something, but next week might be somebody's uh, day that you need to sow into them. If you have nothing to give but you would like to, lift your hand. We're family here. Just lift your hand. We're family here. You have to lift it high so people can see you. If you would lift your hand, somebody's going to put something in your hand. Look around. I need you to look around. Somebody's, somebody's, amen. Thank you so much. Anybody else, you want to make sure that you're giving. You got to put a seed in the, thank you so much for taking care of her. Anybody else? Anybody else? May not even be that you don't. Yeah, hey, just just throw throw some money over there to them babies. Make sure all them babies have something to give. Thank you so much. It may not be that you don't have money. You just left your wallet or you left it in the car. We want to make sure that everybody has the opportunity to give. There's a baby all the way in the back, okay? Got their hand up. I want to make sure that they have something to give also. All right? You can give here several different ways. You can give here uh, through smart giving. That's the way I give on the phone. You can give through cash. You can give uh, to the right. They're giving electronically. Or you can give online for those of you that are listening uh, via prayer call or those of you that will be listening on the radio. All right? You can give that way. This is a very secure way. All right. All right. For those of you that are giving first fruits, I'm going to ask that you do not, that you do not give there, that you would just come to me. I'm going to be standing right here. I want to lay hands on you and prophesy over your life and pray over your life as you give. All right? Uh, if you need a first fruit envelope, uh, lift your hand. Uh, they're going to put a green envelope in your hand for that. If you need an envelope at all, just lift your hand. There's someone right here, ushers. I know it's, it's more difficult for you to see from where you are. I can see them. There, there's, some, there's a hand there. There's a hand there. Uh, ushers, ushers, there's a hand right here, right here. All right, front row, front row. Let's move really quickly. Let's move really quickly, and let's prepare that seed. Lift that seed in the air and say, Father, this is my seed. I sow it in the good ground. OBC is good ground. As I give, it shall be given back to me. Good measure. Press down. Shaking together. Running over. Shall men and women, friends and enemies, give unto me. Lift that seed and wave it in the devil's face and shout, I'll never be broke. A day of my life. It is so. So it is. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now seal that praise with a shout. Would you do that? Seal that seed with a shout. Pass that seed to your left, to my right. Pass that seed to your left, to my right. I'm going to make two announcements, two announcements, and then uh, I'll be taking up first fruits right here. I'm going to make two announcements, and then as you, as you give, and then uh, we're going to get straight into the Word of God. Uh, the first announcement is this. We are four weeks away from Resurrection Sunday. 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 I need all hands on deck, as many ushers that we can give. If you don't do anything in the ministry, you say, hey, Pastor, I don't really do a lot in the ministry, but I'm going to need some help. Uh, I want to help. I need you to usher. I need you uh, to get with Sister Betty. Uh, where are you? Please wave. There she is. Stand. 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 We're going to need you to usher. Uh, number two, we're going to need you to work uh, the parking lot. Who's working that? Who's working the parking lot? Is that Antonio? Would you please stand? Would you please stand? Uh, greeters, is that you also, Sister Betty? All right. Greeters, we need you here. Uh, those, uh, uh, we will probably need more people to uh, work with our um, VIP parking for our elderly. If you have a... Uh, uh, a valid driver's license, and, and you don't have any warrants, amen, for uh, auto theft, amen. You can have them for anything else, just not auto theft. Uh, we would love for you to help us. Uh, the second thing I want to do is I want to get 3,000 people in the building, 3,000 people. In the, everybody say 3,000, 3,000, 3,000 people in this building. It's going 
to happen. 3,000 people. We're going to open those doors and shoot chairs all the way back. And guess who's going to make it happen? The Lord is going to make it happen, but he's going to do it through you. The theme, the theme of uh, Easter or Resurrection Weekend will be this. We have a pulse. We have a pulse. We have a pulse. We have a pulse. And so we're going to get some shirts made. Amen. Uh, and those shirts will have, uh, what do you call that? That uh, our flat line sign. Uh, but it's going to have a, a pulse. All right. We have a pulse. And, and the reason we're, we're teaching that, that's, that's going to be our theme, is because whatever and whoever is dead spiritually in your life, they're going to get a pulse that Sunday. Amen. Y'all receive? So I need your family here. I need your cousins here, uncles, them, mama, them. Get them here on resurrection. And the Lord says if you get them here, he'll save them in the, under the anointing that will be here. Y'all going to try to do that for me? All right. All right. God bless you. We're going to give away flat screen TV for the pro person that brings the most, uh, the most people. We're also going to do a... a um, a, by, uh, a uh, Good Friday Easter service, a resurrection service in Chattanooga, Florida. So if you have anybody from Chattanooga, let them know that we're going uh, to do that. One more time, let's give God the best praise you've got as we go back into worship and then I come back and share the word of God. was torn beyond repair I felt so alone seemed like no one else cared but you came along gave me a song to ease the pain and remove every strain you could. You're standing there. If that's your testimony, lift your hand up for me. Yeah. No one to care. No one to care. You promised me. My life was torn beyond repair. I felt so alone, seemed like no one else cared. But you came along and gave me a song to ease my pain. And remove every stain that you could have, could have me standing there. Standing there. With no, 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 no one, no one to care. But God, you promised me you. You would hear my plea. Hey, God, have your way. That's where you bless me. Here in this place. That's where you bless me. You promised me you would hear my plea. And you did. You did just what you said. Take it up, honey. Say it. Me, you would hear my 
something a little different. Holy Spirit just led me to do something different. Y'all know that's why you don't have a program in your hand because we ain't gonna go by it anyway. This woman of God, come, would you come here just for a second? By no means am I trying to embarrass you. Okay. The word of God says that we overcome by the blood of the lamb and by what? The word of our testimony. Uh, this woman of God, Dreamer just came and I asked her what I could pray for and how could I ask the Lord to move on her behalf. And so her first fruit was assigned to a testimony. She didn't want anything. Uh, she was giving her first fruit from increase. Uh, this woman of God just said that the Lord just gave her a house and she's going to move into it this week. Amen. Why y'all ain't shouting? Yeah. Touch somebody and tell them don't hate, appreciate. Yeah, tell them that. So I'm so, so excited that she didn't come. This is not a first fruit to get anything from God. This is a first fruit because God has given her a blessing. Isn't that beautiful? When God blesses us, he does not give us a part-time blessing, a partial blessing. He does not give us a bootleg blessing, a shade tree blessing. God doesn't drive on 87. He drives on super unleaded. Say amen to that. She has a house. The Lord just gave her a house. So now we've, the first fruit is going to be commanded upon her house. Isn't that beautiful? But, but. When she moves into that house, she has nothing to put it in. Nothing to put in the house. Nothing to put in the house. Uh, I remember when the Lord gave Lady Arnold and I a house. We had nothing to put in the house. I just slept in the house. I mean, it wasn't no electricity. She was like, where you going? I'm going home. She said she was going home to her mama's house. I said, not me. I'm going to lay in the floor in the dark. Because I, in my room, listen to this, y'all. This is how good God is. It was my first time ever having my own room. You, did, you didn't hear what I just said. And it was my first time ever living in a house. I was married and had a child. 
and I had never had my own room in my whole life and had never slept in a house that was ours. And God has brought me from a long way. So I know what it means to go in there and just lay down in the house. I'm with you. How many children do you have? You have three children. How old are they? 14, 10, and 6. I need these babies to have beds to sleep in. Listen to me, family. I need these babies to have beds to sleep in. I, I don't do this all the time, but the Holy Ghost told me to do it. And uh, I need somebody in here. We need some beds. Who has a bed? All right, there's, there's, one, we, there's one back there. There's one, there's one of your beds. There's your second bed over there. There's your third bed right there. You want another one? There's a fourth bed right there. There's five beds right there. Six beds right here. What else you need? All right, she needs a refrigerator. Who has a refrigerator? Who has a re There's your refrigerator right there, baby. There's a refrigerator right there. So you got your bed. She got your refrigerator. What else you need? Dresses and stuff. All right, she needs some dresses and stuff. Who's got some dresses? Well, you need some money too, evidently. Praise the Lord. <laughs> evidently need some money. Who, who, don't, 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 don't do that. I want to preach today, please. Who, who has some, who has some uh, furniture? We need to make sure that she puts some, all right, there's your furniture. Is that Brittany? I cannot see you, daughter. Who is that? It's, all right, whoever that, Sean, let's make sure that this works out, all right? There's, there's your furniture right there. We've got some furniture. There's some more furniture right there. 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 Evidently, you needed some more money. You, you, got, your, you got your light deposit? You do now. You do now. You got your light deposit now. You got your light deposit now. Don't start with me. Why y'all don't act right? See, that's why I don't pass the black churches because y'all don't act right during Black History Month. Just keep it right here. Just hold on. Just hold on. Did I ask y'all to bring some money? Why y'all bringing money? first. Yes, sir, Reese. Now, y'all saying, why he do her? I don't know. She just, I don't know her. I don't know her. Holy Ghost told me to bless her. See, that's why I love this church. That's why the Lord blesses this church. That's why the Lord blesses this church, all right? Put it in the basket, 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 all right. Let, let, hold, hold on a second, put it back in your hand. I, 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 know, I know that, I know I need y'all to put it in her hand first. Let her hug her, hug her, let her know you love her. Let her know you love her. I do not know this girl. That's when you bless me. Come on, Anthony. We got mics up here. Lord, how much? That's when he blessed me. This is when he blessed you, girl. We're going to make sure that there's no need unmet in her life. Say yes. Why the Lord loves this church. Come on, let's move quickly. Let's move quickly. Let's move quickly.
If you're going to come, you got to come now because we, we, I got to get this word out. And you did? Lift your hands, let's worship him. I just want. Come on. You've been so good. Has he been good to you? I want you to know something. The Lord loves you. And he hears your prayers. And you are just an example of what God is going to do to every person that just sold into you. Every person that just sold into you, they're going to get the exact same consequences of the seed that they sold. You see, you sold the first fruit. And in less than five minutes, I don't know what's in here, but in less than five minutes, I guarantee you, you got a hundredfold return. The first fruit principle works. Someone, I'm not going to tell you who it was. Let me show you how much God loves you. That was somebody that put money in your hand. that um, came here with nothing. And when I said, if there's somebody here that needs something from the Lord, if you, you need to give, but you don't have anything to give, someone, one of the family members, put some money in their hand. And uh, they took that seed and they sold it into you. Now, this is the thing. 
They don't have a home. They're living at the Salvation Army. They're homeless. They're homeless. And, you know, and I asked them, I said, why did you do that when you're homeless? He said, at least I got furniture at the Salvation Army. And then they said, it all belongs to the Lord anyway. This ain't our money. This all belongs to the Lord. Father, I thank you for this woman of God. I thank you for this day, this moment. She had no idea that when she walked into this building, she was going to walk into a miracle. Father, I thank you, Lord, that there will be no need unmet in her life. That her broke days are over. That poverty is behind her and prosperity is ahead of her. She is living under an open heaven. And we decree and declare that the devil of debt is broken off of her life and her bloodline. Her children will never know debt. Her children will never know lack because she's going to be faithful in giving to you. We give you praise and we give you glory. We embarrassed. We thank you for every person that sold into her, whether it be furniture or beds or refrigerators or money. Give back to them 100 fold. Your word says that he that giveth unto the poor lendeth unto the Lord. So we shout in advance for the harvest that's coming back into our life. We believe it to be done. We receive it. Do it now, God. And I decree and declare increase hovers over this building. Overflow hovers over this ministry. More than enough overcomes us. The blessing of the Lord makes us rich. Makes you rich. Makes you rich. Makes you rich. Makes you rich. Jesus. Amen. Take me to Mark 6. Give me 20 minutes on that clock. Mark 6. Mark 6. 20 minutes on that clock. Please. It's the heart of the people. Not the heart of the pastor. It's the heart of the people that has blessed this church. Lord, have mercy. Verse 45 out of the NIV. Mark 6 verse 45. And I just want to thank you, you Lord. Y'all don't mind if I just testify to myself. And I just want to thank you, you Lord. Come on, lift your hands one more time. And I just want you. Immediately, Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him in Bethsaida. While he was dismissing the crowd, after leaving them, he went on up into a mountain to do what? To pray. And the word of God says that later that night, the boat was in the middle of the lake. And he was alone on the land. He saw the multitude straining at the oars because the wind was against it. And straightening at the oars because the wind was against them shortly before dawn, he went out to them and he was doing what? Walking on the lake. 
He was about to pass them by. But when they saw him walking on the lake, they thought he was a ghost. They cried out because they all saw him and were terrified. And immediately he spoke to them and said, take courage. It is I. Don't be afraid. Then he climbed into the boat with them and the wind died down. They were completely amazed for they had not understood about the loaves. Their hearts were hardened. I want you to ask your neighbor, where are the water walkers? You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Where are the water walkers? This passage is amazing to me because I don't know why the disciples were in such distress. I don't know why they were in such dismay. Because of the very culture and the content of their names. Disciples. Mathetes. Tutors. Followers of the Lord Jesus Christ. Why are they tripping about the storm? Why are they thrown off? Because they're in the middle of the storm. The very etymology of their name says that storms are coming their way. Matthew, the fifth chapter, says this. Matthew, the fifth chapter, says that the rain falleth upon the just as well as the unjust. John 16 says this. In this world, you shall have trouble. But be of good cheer, for I have already overcome the world. James says, count it not strange. He says, count it up, count, count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, different types of storms and trials and tribulations. Peter says, count it out not strange when you begin to have to suffer the things of this world. Jesus tries to teach us that if you're in this world and you're going to be a mathetes, if you're going to be a disciples, you got to expect storms. There's no way around it. You cannot position yourself politically to maneuver your way around the mess of life. There is no way that you can pay off people or pay off the devil in order to keep you from going through any storms. It does not matter who you are, what color, what race, your, what culture you come out of, what your economic status is, where side of the city that you live in, whether you live in East Knoxville or West Knoxville. It matters not. Everybody in this room knows what it means. To go through some storms. Three types of people what the old preacher used to say that are in this building right now. Those that are just coming out of a storm. Those that are in a storm right now. But don't you judge the ones that have just come out and those on the end because there's one more category. Those that are on their way in it. And so that's why the Bible teaches us that the strong should bear the infirmities of the weak. That's why the Bible says we need to restore such a one, those that have fallen and been overtaken into sin and to satanic traps. Because if it's not your day today, trust me, tomorrow is coming. Please, family, let me just take a pastoral family moment. When you see preachers fall in the media, when you see preachers fall in, in the media, when you see them on social media, they have been caught up in something. They've made some serious mistakes. Or even here in this city, when you see that happen, please don't judge them. Please don't come against them. Please don't destroy them. Even let me say it. I'm at home. This is my church. So we're just going to say it this way. This is our church. We're going to say it this way. Even the foolishness that we see sometimes in our own cities with churches oh don't play with me you know exactly what I'm talking about that's not uh, it's not for us it's not for us uh, to pour to pour gas on that fire God has never called us to be firemen he's called us to be arsonists Oh, God, y'all not listening to me. We're not supposed to go around putting out fires. We're supposed to go around starting fires. Tell somebody I'm a fire starter. 
We set the community on fire. We set the body of Christ on fire. We set our families on fire. So it is very important, family, that we don't try to point our finger at people when they have fallen. Because when you point your finger at people that are following, there are four more fingers that are pointed back to you. It may not be your ditch today, but if you throw dirt on somebody's when they're in their ditch today, understand the devil is digging a ditch for you tomorrow. And the same grace that you're going to need tomorrow is the same grace that we got to give today. Everybody's going to go through some storms, financial storms, infirmity storms, physical storms. Everybody goes through storms. Doesn't matter where you are theologically or doctrinally. It doesn't matter whether you be a Pentecostal charismatic or an atheist or an agnostic. Every single one of us deals with storm. But here's the blessing, and this is where we shout early because I ain't got a lot of time. This is where we shout early. We can go through the storm, but we don't have to allow the storm to go through us. <laughs> Anybody here glad that God made you stormproof? Come on, talk to your boy today. Anybody here glad? That the devil sent storm after storm after storm in your life, but yet you were still able to rise this morning and say, I woke up this morning with my mind. That's old school there, Pop. Stayed on Jesus. So we got to go through storms. Don't try to dodge them. Don't try to pray them away. Don't try to prophesy them away. Don't try to consecrate them away. Storms are necessary for you to be who God wants you to be. Because sometimes what sermons won't do in your life, storms can get it done. The Bible says, according to Mark, the sixth chapter, that these guys were in a storm. They were in a storm. And the re reason I'm struggling with them, why I'm struggling, why they're in such a panic is because this is not the first storm that they've been in. They were in a storm in Mark, the fourth chapter. Come on, y'all been doing your daily devotions, right? That's what we were called to do. Y'all been doing your daily devotions two chapters before they had been in a storm. The difference between this storm and the storm that they were in two chapters before is that Jesus was on the boat in Mark 4, but this time he is not there. Lord, have mercy. And can I tell you, it makes a difference when you're going through a storm whether Jesus is on your boat or not. Can I get a witness up in here? It makes a difference. Hallelujah. Whether you are in the storm, if Jesus is on your boat or not. Here's the reality, my brothers and sisters. They are in a storm in chapter 4, and now they once again are in a storm in chapter 6. The reason why I'm struggling with their attitudes and the way that they are approaching this storm is because they act like this is the first storm that they have been in. As a matter of fact, this storm is extremely, extremely similar. There's a whole lot of similarities in this particular story, storm because the Bible says even the prelude of this particular passage is the same prelude in chapter 4. Let us go to the other side. Let's take it to the next level. That's what he's trying to teach us. He's trying to teach us that any time there is a prophetic call upon your life to take it to the next level, the enemy is always going to try to counter that prophetic with storms. But you cannot allow storms to keep you from the fortune of the future that God has spoken over your life. Many people will never be able to walk in the fortune of their future because they cannot handle the storms of their present. If you cannot make it through storms, you are not qualified to be walking in what God wants you to walk through. Are you listening to me? And so God in Mark 4 gave them the ability to weather the storm and make it to the, to the, across the Sea of Gennesaret and to the land of the Gadareans. You see in Mark 4, when Jesus says, let us go to the other side, he was saying, I want us to go to the land of the Gadareans. If you know anything about Mark 4 going into Mark 5, you will find out that in Mark 4, he says, let's go over to the other side. Let's take it to the next level. And then the storm tries to hinder them from going to the next level, from going to the other side. In Mark 5, it tells you exactly why God was trying to get them there. Exactly why Jesus told them to go there because when they got through the storm and they got off the ship the Bible says there was a man there who is vexed with thousands of devils inside of him you see anytime God is calling you to do great things on behalf of other people he has to see if you can be trusted with ministry many of you are trying to figure out how can I walk in this anointing how can I walk in ministry why is it that I have not been elevated into ministry let me tell you something your elevation into kingdom assignment is not a minister's training class it is not some preacher laying their hands on you it's not some diaconate class my brothers and sisters what qualifies you to deal with other people's devils is 
is that you don't quit when it comes to your own storms. You can never deal with my devils if you don't even know how to handle your own storm. I don't want nobody laying on hands on me trying to deal with my devils when you can't even handle your own storm. Come on, talk to me. You cannot have a collar on your neck and a diaper on your behind at the same time. You're going to have to take one off. Ah, Lord have mercy. Tell somebody I'm stormproof. The reason they shouldn't have been tripping, the reason they shouldn't have went schizophrenic and bipolar is because this is not the first time they've been in a storm. And the reason you ought to still be praising God, although you're in your chapter 6, is because God brought you to you through your chapter 4. Is there anybody here that can praise God and walk in faith in chapter 6? Because you can look back at chapter 4 and say, this ain't the first time I have been through a storm. This ain't the first bill that I've had to pay. This ain't the first sickness that has hit my body. The devil is a liar if he did it before he can do it again same God right now same God back then touch somebody and tell him he's going to do it again in this chapter if he healed your body last year he going to heal your body this year if he's going to bless your finances this year he going to bless your finances next year if God did it before he will do it again and it don't take a whole lot of time for God to work a miracle in your life. You can come in church broke, busted, and disgusted, sow a first fruit, and everybody will put blessings in your hand. Lord, I just heard something in the prophetic right then. I just heard something in the prophetic. I just heard something in the prophetic. This girl says she got a house, but she ain't moved in yet. And then she came here and the people of God who don't even know her start putting stuff in a house that she ain't moved in yet. Can I prophesy to about 700 of you and tell you if you will praise him right now for stuff you ain't moved into yet, God going to start filling it. Can I get away? God going to fill a bank account that you ain't even opened up yet. Tell somebody beside you, I ain't shouting for what's about to happen. I'm shouting for what's already done. I've already got the car. I already got the house. I've already got the man. I've already got the woman. I've already got the relationship. I've already got the healing. Open up your mouth. Throw up your head. And praise God for what's about to happen in your life. There's a moving truck. A moving truck of blessings backing up to your life. Okay, six of y'all got that. Mama, you got it. I said that's a U-Haul of blessings. FedEx is about to produce favor in your life. G-O-D just called UPS to give you a blessing. And he said, don't wait till the battle is over. Sorry, Please be seated. <laughs> He's trying to teach him why. Oh, you're pretty girl. He, yes, it is. It's a, it's a U-Haul blessing backed up to my house. He's trying to teach them to evaluate the patterns of God. What is stressing you out, family, is you have not evaluated the patterns of God. God has always made a way for you. Don't play with me. Stand, don't play with me. God has, I'm not saying that you haven't been at the bottom, but you didn't stay at the bottom. God has always made a way for you. I'm not saying that you didn't go through a season of nightmares, but when you woke up, didn't he put you in your dream? God has always, Deke, made a way for you. 
So if you can't praise him for nothing in the future, look back at your past. Because if it brought you out of your storm, mama, in chapter 4, he going to do the same thing for your mother in chapter 6. Now, I need you to learn how to praise him in chapter 5. Oh, God, I'm preaching it here today. You didn't, you didn't hear. Golden, they did not hear what I just said. I said you was in your storm in chapter 4 and he made a way. He said, I'm going to make the manifestation of your blessing in chapter 6. But I need you to praise me in chapter 5. Now, what happened in chapter 5? The whole book, chapter 5, was about demons. Some of y'all waiting before all your demons leave to start praising him. But I'm looking for about mm, 300 of you that say he prepared a table. Please, man. Before me, where? In the presence of my enemy. In other words, family, God don't bring your table up until all your enemies show up. If you got some enemies hating on you, lying on you, trying to destroy your character, good. That means God is about to bring your table. I dare you to touch somebody and tell them this is a chapter 5 praise. Come on, give him 30 seconds of chapter 5 praise. While you're in your chapter 5, praise him for chapter 4 and praise him in advance for the chapter 6. That's all about. Please be seated. Your chapter six is Monday morning. I said your chapter six is Monday morning. You see that, I, you, you know, I, I know, I know what you just did. I wasn't talking to you. This is a smart girl here. I, what, I pointed at him. I wasn't talking to him, but she lifted up her hand and said, I receive it. Touch somebody and tell them that's a divine interception. Can I get a witness? That's, <laughs> that's when God is throwing a blessing to somebody else, but you say, I receive that. Touch somebody and tell them I'm about to run into the end zone. Even if I didn't mean for it to hit me, I'm going to walk into it. Whoever will receive it today, you can have it. Please be seated. This is my third time preaching today. They thought he was a ghost. Jesus started coming at him. They thought he was a ghost because he was walking on the water. That which was trying to destroy him. He started walking on it. You didn't hear what I said. That which was supposed to bring them down was holding him up. You see, when you walk in your flesh, you're going down. But when you walk in his spirit, that which was supposed to bring you down, you'll be able to put your foot on it. God, that's my word. I receive that. That means every person that's tried to bring you down, put your foot on it. Every person that said you ain't going to make it, put your foot on it. Last time I checked, the Bible says the enemy is my footstool, which means it makes me higher. Can I get a witness up in here? Every devil that tries to get in your way, don't go around the devil. Step on it. Because every place that the sole of your feet shall tread upon, he's already given it. And Peter said, if Jesus can do it, I'm going to do it too. Can I tell you something? Whatever Jesus can do, you can do it too. If Jesus can lay hands on the sick and the sick recover, touch somebody and tell them I can do it too. If Jesus can cast out demons and demons 
tremble at his name. Tell somebody I can do it too. As a matter of fact, let's go on and close this thing. Would you grab somebody's hand and say, neighbor, I don't know about you, but I'd rather walk in the storm with Jesus than stay on the boat with people that don't want nothing from God. Tell somebody, neighbor, this is my Sunday that I'm coming out of the boat. I'm coming out of comfort. I'm coming out of this zone and I'm stepping into something that I never stepped in before. Now I need you to tell the devil, devil, I ain't running from you, but I'm running to you. Get your hands off my children. Get your hands off my marriage. Get your hands off my ministry. Get your hands off my mind. I'm stepping out the boat. I'm walking in my purpose. I'm walking in my destiny. Go on and open up the business. Start the nonprofit. Go back to school. What the enemy meant for evil. I said what the enemy meant for evil. God's going to work it out for your good. Would you prophesy to your neighbor? Put your bony finger in their face and say, neighbor, get out the boat. Get out the boat. Ain't no money on that boat. Ain't no joy on that boat. Ain't no increase on that boat. Ain't no anointing on your boat. Now grab that neighbor's hand. Don't just play with me. Grab that neighbor's hand and say, neighbor, I'm coming off the boat. I'm about to step on some water. I'm about to walk close to Jesus. And since you're holding my hand, I'm pulling you out with me. I'm pulling you into your joy. I'm pulling you into your hope. I'm pulling you into your miracle. I'm pulling you into some grace. I'm pulling you into some prosperity. I'm pulling you into a new anointing. Shake that neighbor's hand like you're going to shake it off. Tell him, come on out of it. Come on out of it. Come on out of it. And the Bible says, that when Jesus and Peter stepped back into the boat, the storm stopped. I hate to tell you this, but your storm ain't going to stop until you do something dangerous with Jesus. <laughs> oh, I feel this. Your storm is not going to stop until you do something dangerous with Jesus. And the Bible says that when Peter saw the wind, he had his eyes on Jesus walking on the water, had the enemy under his feet. But when he saw the wind, he began to sink. Oh, let me say that again. He was walking with Jesus, doing the impossible. While he had his eyes on Jesus, First of all, he didn't even realize he was still in the storm. You see, you worshiping with some people today. And by the look of their worship, you don't think they got no storms. And you mad at them? Because they ain't dealing with your storms. 
Newsflash. Why you think all the curls don't fill out their hair? Newsflash. Why you think they weave tracks done got loose? Newsflash. Why you think their makeup is running? They been in a storm. <laughs> they still in a storm. But they ain't acting like it. Because they got their eye. On Jesus. And when, family, he saw the wind. He gathered his people and said, I've got a problem. It's not a theological problem. It's a scientific problem. Because you can't see me. What color is wind? How tall is wind? How much does wind weigh? What shape, dimension, height? Wait, with is when you can't see when, but you can feel it. So what the text really meant is when he got in his feelings, he took his eyes off Jesus. Ah! And he began to say, Just shall live by faith. You don't have to feel saved to be saved. You don't have to feel healed to be healed. You don't have to feel alone to know that he'll never leave you or forsake you. When he got into his feelings, mother, he began. We about to shout, shout right here, Jared. Uh, when he got into his feelings, watch this. He began to sink. I'm through. He began to sink. Uh, having another scientific problem. I've never jumped in, mother, 10 feet of water and began to sink. of grace and love. He is so patient with us, family, that even when we take our eyes off him, he will slow down the process of you going down till you come up with enough sense to say, Lord, save me. Three words, Tyvee, can change your whole life. This is not for everybody that is dealing with sin and struggling with kingdom assignment. This is for everybody in here that feels like they've been sinking. Maybe it is sinking in the cesspool of sin, or perhaps it's sinking financially into debt, or perhaps it's sinking into your own emotions and low self-esteem. But whatever you're sinking in, God told me to tell you, three words better come out of your mouth today. Soon as he said it, he didn't say, God, the father of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, God, the lamb, the lily of the valley, the bright and morning star, Mary's baby, God, that gets in the fiery furnace with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, 
God that binds up the mouth of a lion in Daniel's lion's den. God that steps on a boat with Noah in the midst of a flood. He does not say any of that. He says, Lord, say me. Because sometimes you're going down so fast that you ain't got time for that spiritual junk, for that religious rhetoric. Lord, when your child is facing 10 years in jail, Lord, save me. When they find the lock in your breast, Lord, save me. When the car is spinning around on the highway and it's about to hit the guardrail, and the moment he did it, the Bible says, Jesus reached down and picked him up. When you said that today, Jesus reached down and picked you up. You're not the same person going out preached in a while that you were coming in. He has saved you. He's thrown a life device to you. You're not going down. You're not going down. You're coming up. You're not going to have a breakdown. You're about to get a breakthrough. You're not going to die. You shall live to declare the works. Hey, my shikara basata. Hey, mokata. To declare the works of the Lord. I need everybody here just to pray as loud as you can. Worship as loud as you can. Praise him as loud as you can. Shikara basata. You are not going down. You are not going down. You are not going down. This is not the worst day of your life. This is the best day of your life. This is not the last day of your life. This is the first day of your life. You are not going down. Lord, save me. Lord, save my family. Lord, save my marriage. Lord, save our city. Bible says when they got into the boat even the people that didn't have the courage to get off the boat all worshipped your courage to do the impossible is going to pull other people into your worship can we just close this service out with worship. Come on. All over this building, just lift your voices, lift your hands. Tell the Lord, thank you for saving you. Tell him, thank you for praying for you when you were in your storm. Come on, come on, lift your voices. Tell the Lord, thank you for saving you and saving your family and saving your children. Even if it's not a manifestation yet, begin to thank him for it even before you see the manifestation. Come on, let's give it to the Lord. Let's give it to the Lord. Let's give it to the Lord. Let's give it to the Lord all over the building. I need to hear your voices. Come on, choir, loud as you can. All over the building. Father, move in this place as we come to the climax of this place. I want to be made Would you put your arms around somebody and tell them the Lord is saving you from this? Come on, all over the building. Just hold on to him. Don't let him go so quick. Tell him the Lord is holding on. He's saving you from this. He's going to save you from that financial debt that you're dealing with. He's going to save you from that problem that you thought you couldn't get over. He's going to save you from the pain that you're experiencing right now. He's going to save you from it. Hallelujah. I want to be made me.
Grab somebody's hand all over this building. Father, I thank you for this day. Thank you for the anointing that was on our children today. Thank you for the anointing that was on worship today. Thank you for the anointing that's on me today. Thank you for the anointing that's on our house today. Lord, we confess and repent for not trusting you in chapter 6 when you had been faithful to us in chapter 4. Lord, we believe, but help our unbelief. We just struggle sometimes. We give the enemy too much space in between our ears. We allow him to speak that stuff of doubt and negativity into our minds. Lord, help us not to feel the wind, but to stay focused on the word. We love you, and we thank you that we're going to make it to the other side because you said so. We give you praise. We give you glory. For there is none like you in all the earth. If you're in this place, you're not 100% sure that you're saved. You want to go to heaven, you don't want to go to hell. You want to live for Jesus. You don't want to live for yourself. Today is the day of salvation. Now is the appointed time. I'm going to give you the opportunity to say the same thing Peter said when he was going down. Lord, save me. Everybody's grabbing somebody's hand. Every head is bowed. Every eye is closed. If you're in this place, you're not 100% sure that you're saved. You want to go to heaven, you don't want to go to hell. You want to live for Jesus, you don't want to live for yourself. Choose Jesus because he's shown up choosing you. I don't care what you've done wrong last year, last week, last month, or last night. God will save you if you want to be saved today. Don't you dare wait for Good Friday or Easter to give your life to Jesus. Although we're planning for it, it may never come. It may never come for us because Jesus may come back and get us before them, but it may not come for you because you may die before that date. If you're going to gamble with anything, don't gamble with your soul. My brother, my sister, when I count to three, I want you to squeeze somebody's hand if you want to be born again. If you want to go to heaven, it doesn't matter what you've done wrong. It's, it only matters that in your heart today you say, Lord, save me. Second group of people. You're saying, Pastor, I'm saved, but I need a church home, and I believe that this is the home that God wants me in. Today, my brothers and sisters, we open the doors up to you. We will love you as best as we can. Don't get it twisted. There's some angels in here, but there's some devils in here, too, at every church. But don't allow your enemies to keep you from eating at your table. My brothers, my sisters, this might be the place of your miracle. Third group of people, you're saying, Pastor, I'm saved. I've got a church home, but it's in another city. Pastor Spencer in Memphis is my pastor. Jamal Bryan in Baltimore is my pastor. I.V. Hilliard in Houston is my pastor. Kevin Adams in Chattanooga is my pastor. Troy Garner in Huntsville or A.D. in Huntsville is my pastor. Creflo Dollar in Atlanta is my pastor. But pastor, I'm going to be here for a year. I'm here for school. I'm here for a job. I'm here because the Lord sent me here on assignment. And I need to be covered until then under watch care. I believe that this is the church where I'm supposed to be covered until I go back to my home church. If you're in one of those three categories, you're being saved today. You're joining the ministry today or you're coming under watch, watch care. When I count to three, I just want you to squeeze somebody's hand. Only the people that God is talking to, it's on you. Father, I've done all I can do. No man can come lest he be drawn by the Spirit. One, don't let the enemy keep you bound another day of your life. I'm not going to give you the mic. I'm not going to ask you to testify. I just need you to get your heart right. Two, pride coming before destruction and a haughty heart before a great fall. If there are butterflies swimming around in your stomach, that's your body telling your soul that your spirit needs to be saved. Three, if that's you, squeeze that hand right now. 
we sat here and right now. Thank you, Lord, for what you've done. In Jesus' name. If somebody squeezed your hand, I want you to lift that hand straight up in the air right now, all over the building. Lift it up, lift them 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 up. All over the building. Somebody squeeze your hand. Now, if someone lifted your hand or you lifted their hand, bring them to this altar. Let me just pray them into the kingdom. Let's seal the deal. Come on, all over the building. You're not by yourself. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on. Anybody else want Jesus? There's plenty of him left to go around. Anybody else want Jesus? There's plenty of him left to go around. They're still coming. They're still coming. They're still coming. I'm almost finished. I'm almost finished. Let me finish the invitation. Let me finish the invitation. We're almost through. Everybody in the building, pray this prayer with me really quickly. Say, Father, in Jesus' name. Thank you for this day. I believe by faith that Jesus Christ died for my sins, that I might have life, and that life more abundantly. I am saved. I am saved. I am safe. In Jesus' name. Amen. If you prayed that from your heart, you are just as good as going to heaven as though you were there right now. I want you to fill out that card if you don't mind. The only reason we want you to fill it out, only reason we want you to fill it out is so we can be, know how to pray for you, so that we can believe God for you and uh, stay connected to you. Amen.